Hi, I'm going to show you some of the math strategies that we're learning at school so that you can help your child at home. A lot of these strategies are very different to the way we were taught back in the day, but the main um, reason for these strategies is to help students to understand what the problem is that they're asked, asked to solve um, so that they can show the problem and show their thinking that's going in their head, be able to break down the numbers and manipulate them to help them to solve the problem and then this will help us to move on to um, solving these types of problems in our heads um, with a really efficient strategy but as well move on to the vertical addition. And it's really important that they can show these problems in these multiple forms and solve them in different strategies um, so that we can really see that they've got the strong understanding about why uh, we trade numbers or um, what happens when we have to cross and build to the next 10. And then this is a very important skill for when we move on to bigger numbers or moving on to multiplication and division. So this is a fairly simple word problem. Um, there are 36 dogs and 15 cats. How many animals are there in total? So the first strategy up here is a tape diagram and that's a really good uh, way to show the problem that is there. So the way a tape diagram works is you just draw out the problem and represent numbers as if they were a piece of sticky tape. So I would show 36 dogs as one piece of tape and then 15 cats as another piece of tape. And I know that the question is asking me how many are there all together. So I know by putting those together I know it's going to be looking for the total which tells me I need to do an addition problem to add them together. So it'll be 36 plus 15 equals something. When I then go and add it together, I can use the tape diagram to help me split up these numbers and add the two together. So if I split up the 15 into 10 and five, then I can add the number in small pieces. So. 36 plus 10, that equals 46. So then I'm having to do 46 plus 5. I know to get to the next 10, I only need 4 more. So 46 plus 4 is 50. And then there was one left over. And then I can see my answer will be 50 plus 1, which equals 51. So that's just one way that we could represent the problem or actually then go ahead and manipulate the numbers so that we can use this strategy to solve the problem. The next way we're cho teaching children to solve problems is with the arrow method. This is a great way to, a great method that eventually they'll be able to do in their heads. So with the arrow method, we would have our starting number, which in this case is 36. And then it's really just about adding one piece of the number at a time. So we know that 15 is made up of 10 and five, and I can show that in a number bond. So with the arrow method, I just add on one piece of that at a time. So 36, plus 10 equals 46. And then I could go ahead and add the whole five or I could add another one piece at a time. So I could go. Plus one, which would get to, oops, get to 47. Plus one, forty-eight. Plus one, which would get to forty-nine. So I've already added three more and I need to add five, so I'll keep going. 
plus 1 is 50. Plus 1 is 51. So that's another way that the children could solve a problem by adding one little piece at a time. They could jump up by tens or ones or another way they might have chosen to do that is do plus four first and then the plus one to get up to the next ten. There's more than one right way to do each strategy. Four place value discs. Um, it's a good way to remember what the value of each number is. So you would first draw the first number and draw the place value discs for that. So I would draw three tens and six ones to show the 36. And then I draw, I'll change color. Then I would draw my 15. 110 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I quite uh, like drawing these numbers in as if it was a um, tens frame, and then that way I can see when I've got a full 10. When there is a full 10 altogether, we know we need to bundle them and then swap them. For another 10. So now I can see I've got five tens and one left over. So then the answer would be 51. The place value discs is the way that we learn more about the vertical addition and I'll show you how this would be the first step before children can actually do this next uh, way that I'm going to show you. So with vertical addition we would write the numbers out on top of each other so that the tens are aligned and the ones are aligned. Then we add up just like we did with the place value discs, one column at a time. Six plus five, we saw that equaled 11. One ten and one left over. So we're gonna actually write the whole one ten and one one. And this represents exactly what we made here with the 110 and the 11. Then we go back and add with this 10. 3 tens plus 1 is 4 tens and 0 ones. Now if I count and I look how many we've got in each column, I've got 1 1 and now I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tens. 1 plus 4 tenths is 5 tenths and then that helps me get to 51. So this is the different strategies that we're learning at school. It's what you'll see the, the children trying to attempt to do in Seesaw and perhaps even with homework. So when you see your child's work you can talk to them about this and help them with these strategies at home.